Hey everyone, welcome to Zeitgeist Zealots. I'm Forrest. I'm Major. And I'm Robbie. And I am Tip. So today we're going to talk there. about that boys finale. And uh, I think the latest episode of Miss Marvel. Um, I think we're going to save Stranger Things, the finale, for another day. When, uh, Matt had Matt's. a scheduling error uh, issue. So we are going to hold off on Stranger Things. Uh, I mean, you know. It's two and a half hours long, so we can. I'm just about act- to forget what yeah, happened. we can we can just act so like long. we just act like we forgot it, just gives us another chance to to Same. rewatch it. Um, and but honestly, fact. like, is there anything else to talk about besides this mind blowing finale of the boys? Oh, the boys. Did I mention Miss Marvel yet? Because the reason we're, we want to postpone Stranger Things is because we only have Miss Marvel next week. That and is that might, correct. So that might not be. Uh, uh, thanks so much for listening and bearing with us. Now we know that you've probably listened to, uh, to other breakdowns and, and reviews, podcasts, or whatever, of Stranger Things. So I think it'll be a nice little refresher um, being three weeks late to the party. Uh, we'll have, did you know Joseph Quinn actually played Master of Puppets? Uh, or, 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 or someone's kid. Else. Yeah, we can find... Yeah, we'll have lots of deep dives. And more importantly, my opinion on the matter. No, Matt's opinion. Uh, it's, it's really what we, we've been waiting for. Uh, I'm but sure really, we're all just going to... I want to know about right now, guys, and that's your final thoughts on The Boys season three. Um, I will say that uh, this ep- this fin- finale was not as good as the previous two episodes, but um, you know it definitely did what a finale is supposed to do. It uh, tied everything up in a nice bow and set things up or reset them for the next season, which is what a finale is supposed to do. But I'd say like. Yeah. I don't know. I'd say like the finales for all three seasons of this show have not been amazing. I think like the best episodes of this series are usually like, um, you know, and this were like the middle or you know the, the non-finale episodes. The penultimate episode, the one. The penultimate. The episodes, Wait a second. The middle episode. That was the, that was the finale. So that was the finale. finale. So yeah. Hope you enjoyed the boys. <laughs> so, you'll be seeing them again for another year and a half. Oh no. Let me ask you this, yeah. Forrest. That now, do you find their season finales to be lackluster because they're not cliffhangers? Uh, because they're tied up in night in like nice well, neat bows that, or that first season was definitely a cliffhanger. Um, okay. But I think like the uh, the whole like Starlight fighting A Train fight in the first season finale was a little underwhelming. And right. I think, yeah, there's just some other. I need to rewatch it though, of course. But I just remember like the finale being like, uh, you know, this is not the strongest episode. And I mean, but, we'll, we'll break down into this more. But I mean, like just the ending with Homelander and he lasers that guy's head, and then Ryan starts oh, to smile. Oh yeah, that was a that was a great oh, man, like, that slow smile. Yeah, and then you get oh, just and that's the, when you know he's that they're making a, a little mini Homelander. Oh, basically, my. insert the mini me. <laughs> gif dude when yeah. you lasered the guy's head that was the scariest moment yeah it was like when wait I heard there was the dream season. again and everyone's when all I heard... quiet and then fucking todd that yeah. super white stepdad just starts oh cheering gosh. and it's like if one person approves like everyone's like waiting like wait do we applaud this like they all are love we it sub- are we supposed but they're to waiting okay for someone this? to come out and like cheer for it and then once that once once stepdad todd starts cheering he just loses his damn mind the whole crowd does. Oh my gosh, that was the step. Yeah, that was. Yeah, that was. Yeah, uh, that was the mother's step milk. Dad. Oh, probably like the most buddy. hated. Probably the most hated character on the show. Right I don't now, think. More so than Homelander. I don't think his daughter. Oh. Like, I, don't I don't think know. his daughter was there though. That no, I his daughter wasn't no, there. No, no, no. I think you know who his, was his, there? The uh, QAnon shaman. Yep, yep, yep. He showed that, us that That's picture. the dude with the with the horns. With the horns and the face paint. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently got out of prison, or he apparently is going to prison. I don't know. I know the guy uh, who's the guitarist for Ice Earth is probably in prison right now, or he's about to be. I haven't really checked up on that, but anyway, yeah, I think uh, I'll just break down like what do I do. You did think like, Homelander's going to prison? Probably did not. Did you see the segue? Like, not. It seems, seems going like the people cause, are. Because <laughs> yeah, the only guy like who can arrest him is in uh, coma again, or he's in a uh, you in know stasis. In yeah, incubator, a, med- yeah. a medical coma. Oh yeah, I thought right it was interesting where he was. that VP Newman said that she was here to protect everybody, and then Homelander goes and and kills somebody. Uh, also, Jessica or, or what's her name? Something Newman. It's not Jessica Newman. It's uh, Victoria Newman. Um, yeah, she is the gender swapped Vic the Veep from the comic books. Uh, yeah. Looks like she's going to the White House, right? Like, so that's yeah, what I'm saying. Like, there's a president. lot of exciting stuff. I really enjoyed the season finale. Lots is and I think they set up bingo. like a lot of stuff. Like, there's Butcher at the end. He's drinking that stupid Homelander cup. He's like, up, 
Looks like she's next, boys. Like, like she's fucked. Like, we know what we're going to do in season four. Yeah, and uh, it's funny because I think in the comics, uh, Victor Newman is actually like a George W. Bush parody. And he's basically just like so stupid, he can't even like put a condom on. And there's like a story like a, like, he's like, it's like a uh, brothel. And he's like, uh, my, uh, my winky hat. And yeah, like, I, uh, Secret Service is like, what? He's like, my winky hat. He gives him a condom. He has to put his, the guy's con he has to put a, his condom on. So. I, I have to say, Vic the Beat was probably my least enjoyable character uh, of Garth Ennis is the boys. Like, I just think he was too stupid. Uh, too yeah, and he's like, level. he's like, he's like, literally like parody. mentally challenged. Yeah. yeah. He's like literally mentally challenged, so. I guess it's like in a world a that's super realistic where superheroes would totally act like this and capitalism would totally destroy America. Uh, also, this guy's in charge. Uh, but I get it for the times. Uh, and, and I understand it, the it, it's, it's for the satire. Yeah, I understand the satire. Yeah, yeah. but we're, we're uh, discussing the comic and that was made like uh, like in t late 2000s or the aughts as um, Matt would correct us on. But, you know, yeah. that was a different time. The Bush administration was still very, very fresh. And like we just had no idea what was coming, and uh, yeah, it's still very, very and uh, you know, inept. this voice, this uh, this show, this show has really been um, you know retooled for the modern day. Um, so let's talk about the the big death. Uh, yeah. More. Oh yeah. Uh, and spoilers. that's not Mave. What the fuck? We'll or Soldier Boy. Or Soldier yeah. Boy. But let's talk about Black yeah. Noir. Black Noir. He won't be back more. So. No, but the cartoons kind of fade <laughs> out. That black. was so bad. It was not bad anymore. Oh, you're gonna be back anymore. That's good. I like that. Uh, five stars. Uh, if you enjoyed that, <laughs> out of a hundred, <laughs> <laughs> five out of hundred. Yeah. Uh, some so. people are online are wondering if he's still alive because of his crazy healing, but I don't think he is. I mean, there's yeah, a whole to... zombie like aspect oh, in the right. comics, yeah, yeah. but they have yet to even hint at it. Really, oh, I think they've hinted at it in previous seasons, but they've yet to like really say anything about it. And after three seasons, if they're not going to mention it, I don't think they're going to do that part of this, the comics. Uh, so I think story. I, I think I think Black Noir might just be dead. Yeah, I um, mean, I thought obviously it was they... that Stan Edgar didn't come to the rescue. Oh I, yeah, I, I messed that up. I thought I really I for sure mm -hmm. thought. Uh, John Carlos Esposito was coming back uh, to save the day for C uh, for episode eight. Yeah, I mean he's probably busy doing Better Call Saul and Mandalorian right now, so he's probably busy. But that being said, you know um, I can definitely see him coming back in season four, as Queen May probably will, because basically there's like really no consequences when you lose your powers in the show. You just take yeah, unless you're Kimiko, anything. right? Like. Kimiko gets hit with this wave blast and almost dies, and then every other superhero that gets hit by it just has like lost their superpowers Destroyed. in a black eye. Love sausage still has love sausage though. I bet his dick was super burned. Just I don't think he was able though. to move it afterwards. Oh, okay. He might need some some Viagra. Where's the compound um, Viagra? Speaking of needing some V, uh Butcher. We found out that Butcher's got a ticking clock now. Maybe 12 yeah. to 18 months maximum. One. I don't see them getting rid of Kyle or or, or Carl Urban. I don't think I don't see them getting rid of Urban for this amazing show. Like he is perfectly butcher, and he really holds the show well together. So you think he's going to end up taking Compound V to 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 save his life at the end of it? I guess so. I mean, unless they just like can just do another version. Isn't that of the MV. hero's arc? Don't you become what you hate? That's pr that's true. Also, there could be a, um, a a new hero out there whose power is to heal people. So maybe he there's a hero who can heal his uh, V cancer. Interesting. Whatever he has. You think there would be like a healing superhero or something? There always is. You know. You know. Um, it's random. Was the was the name of the chicken uh, uh, heroes? Well, she don't heal heal herself. Okay, I take that back. Is that the cheerleader? Yeah, the cheerleader. They had to yeah, save, save, save the cheerleader, the save the world, man. Yeah, I only got to season one, I think. Um, season two yeah. was garbage. That was during the writer's strike. Season one was near perfect, but season two was near awful. Just the writer's <laughs> strike, like between like was it 2007, 2008, just completely destroyed television. <laughs> you know, really. Like lost, I mean, lost Prison Break. You know, even like the James Bond Quantum of Solace movie. I think because they had like a half finished script. They had to write That's it. Reason why yeah, they're... Daniel Craig was writing it like <laughs> on the spot. Uh, yeah. Now I'm not, not getting like political into it. Like definitely 
they needed to get paid more, right? Especially after that last season of Lost and that last season of Heroes and Prison Break, like this was peak yeah. writing, and they deserved yeah. to get paid more with 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 better hours and better working conditions. It but definitely damn didn't stop talk did, shows. Did television just to get destroyed? Yeah. Talk shows endure. They just had more guests on. They just doubled up their guests because you don't need a writer for that. It's just talking to the guest about whatever show they're not doing. But I know that like, the Daily Show did that. They just had like, um, they did something to you know, keep the, the lights on. But um, I don't uh, know. Stephen Colbert, I think, had like a fake fight with Steve. Conan O'Brien and with John Conan Stewart. O'Brien, yeah. And they had like a three-way fight. It's on YouTube. It's like a really funny like bit that they did during the writer's strike. I do remember that. I think John Stewart has his own no shoot show now. His daily, his own. Oh, it's fantastic! Show called the I Problem. highly, highly recommend it. They do a lot of f- free clips on YouTube, like long segments. They've got some ten minutes, but you know, even some twenty and forty minutes. So I'm not sure like what the whole hour TV show is like on Apple TV, but the free segments on YouTube are pretty good. Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna get Apple TV. I don't think there's a single show that makes me want to get it. Severance. Have you heard about Severance? That's what go, everyone go says. For, uh, go for uh, what's TV. Severance looks amazing. If you guys want us to cover Severance, um, tweet at us at these uh, uh, podcasts on don't Twitter. Don't have Apple TV though. Yeah, I've been watching Tubi. It's but it's free. Like, it's like four dollars a month. It's like five dollars a month. I was like, oh, actually, okay. Like, hey, I was like, I was like oh, actually, there's this is so actually many. worth it. You know, so it's, streaming services. I might. I just might do that because I think after Miss Marvel ends, I won't have a reason to keep. Yeah, Disney Apple Plus. TV is I mean, five dollars a month, and then you can watch Severance. And then what's that show about the American football coach who goes to Ted, Ted Lasso? Ted Lasso is like supposed to I be like Jason Sudeikis. I don't like Jason Sudeikis. Oh, oh you only like Jason Sudeikis? No. Have you seen the new South Park? The Streaming Wars. Oh yeah. Oh, the major has though. I it's haven't a, seen it. Um, I watched I it last get, night. I had to get Paramount Plus for that. Ugh. Yeah, I had to. I had to add Paramount Plus back. Can you believe that? Oh yeah, yeah. Totally and I heard Strange New Worlds isn't getting any better, or it's just. I mean, it's just slightly. Better I heard that's the only good discovered. one. Was I know, but Worlds. that's not. That's not like a compliment. It's just like that wasn't hard to do. <laughs> yeah, Speaking of too. Strange New Worlds, what do you guys think is going to happen in season four? Oh, nice. Get back on topic. Yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> I think um, you know. I think actually Eric Kripke said like uh, yesterday or two days ago that Maeve is going to be taking a break for a while. So I guess she'll not be a season regular next year. Why not just kill her off? That feels like a punk move. Like, this is the boys. Like, why not kill Maeve off? But then it's like a love story with their girlfriend because they were apart because of her powers. Who is absent this entire season. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. That love story, which didn't happen at all this season. But, um,. I don't know. Uh, I mean, I like the actress, but I, I do think it was it cheapened the moment, her sacrifice by just having her survive. And even, yeah. well, a, a, she lost her powers by the time she landed, I would imagine, so she should have been dead from the fall. <laughs> right, exactly. Or the explosion, but definitely the fall. Um, at least more than, like, a black guy. But whatever. It just seems weird as a, as a show that, that holds no punches to to not kill off a character when they obviously should have died just seems just seems to have stuck uh, sticks out to me if that makes sense it's it's sort of like you know if i think it's just the the producers putting the actor in front of the story you know it's sort of like you know they really liked uh, what's the guy's name Giancarlo esposito on breaking bad as gus but they knew it would be better for the story to kill him off because they needed to like in this confrontation between him and Walt, right, and just have okay. kept going over and over again. So it served the story to kill off Gus, even though they liked the actor. And same thing for *The Sopranos* when they killed um, uh, Big Pussy, um, you know, in season two. Spoiler. Um, oh, you know, they love they love the actor, but you know, I think David Jason like yeah, such a great, great story about him like betraying Tony to the FBI that we just we couldn't keep him. You know, there was no way to keep him on the show without killing him or either killing him or having Tony uh, go to, to jail and you know, the latter was would have ended the show. So it's it's just it's a, I think this is definitely a case of um, them lacking the actor and sacrificing the emotional beats of the story. Speaking of liking but, the actor, what do you think about uh, Jason Eccles this season as Soldier Boy? I thought he was yeah, he phenomenal. was also great, but he but they put him back him. on ice. So do you yeah. think we're gonna see him again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, it reminds me of, like in uh, True Blood, like the bad guy somewhere? in season three was like 
they didn't kill him, and they brought him back later. Um, oh yeah, they buried him in died. the cement. Yeah, that's when I stopped watching True Blood. I think that's I think the witch season was when I was like, okay, that's enough. Um, but yeah, I think they, they brought him back later on, from what I hear. So they'll probably bring Soldier Boy back in some capacity. And um, you know, what about Cindy? Rob, How, uh, do you do you feel betrayed? Yeah. not seeing Cindy in season uh, in the season finale, or are you looking forward to a Cindy season? No, she might. I don't know if they're if she's just like Rob, a, said now. a one episode character. Or if they she might just pop up again. Who knows? I always wondered, like, if uh, Rob is holding him. Love Sausage would be coming back or not. He came back. That was that's, that's a good point. He, he's probably not coming back again, though. Yeah. <laughs> not after Soldier Boy. Or maybe just, like, a little hint of him somewhere. Like, that you see him on TV in the I background. I still think so. that should be Mother's Milk, <laughs> uh, his superpower, if he gets... Um, I think they like if he gets Love Compound Sausage B. Mother's Milk. Just because his interactions with uh, Love Sausage were so good these last two seasons. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Got that little bit on his jacket. And boom. Oh yeah. Well, that was that was, that was amazing. That was the best episode the of the second. season. Besides all that stuff, you know, as we said previously. So yeah. Um, so did y'all, re- uh, I guess we'll talk about the three-way fight between uh, Maeve, Soldier Boy, Butcher, and Homelander, which did not turn out as expected. R.I.P. Maeve's eye. Oh, that's right. She did lose an eye. God, I hate when that happens. It's so gruesome. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, um, but yeah, I think there was a lot of... It was brutal. Yeah, very brutal. Um, but yeah, were y'all convinced that, um, not convinced, but th- did y'all like how it played out? Did y'all like that? I did. Turned on Soldier Boy. I did like the the betrayal, like you know, because you're worried, like you you finally see three generations of, of superheroes together on, on one screen, and then you're all worried, the tension's rising, like what's gonna happen? Like you know, someone asked in in the TV show, are they gonna fight or are they gonna fucking hug? Right? Uh yeah. And then it turns out like Soldier Boy is just like, dude, if I was. I'm, I'm sorry I wasn't there as a dad. If I was, you would have turned out to be such a piece of shit. And then just goes to town on them. Uh, and I really enjoyed oh my that. Gosh. I thought they were about to just team up. And, yeah. Like, he's just such an asshole. And then, you know, things are things are looking out for, for the good guys until Ryan shows up with his pesky laser eyes. Yeah. Laser if soldier Ryan boy. Wasn't there, I think yeah. Homelander would have died if Ryan wasn't there. Yeah, oh, I yeah. think so. Yeah, but yeah I, think I think so too. Homelander knew they were coming for him because he spoke with Soldier Boy. Um, I mean, I don't think he knew that Soldier Boy was going to kill him, but he definitely didn't want to kill Soldier Boy. He uh, like Black Noir wanted to. I love how earlier in the season, and like we understand why we, we've talked about this on the podcast during the episode, but like when Butcher is an asshole to Ryan to to try to save him and protect him. It just pushes him away and pushes him right into Homelander's arms. Yeah. So it just, it was, bleh, that sucks. Like, yeah, whoops. The ultimate irony. I know. Butcher. You, yeah. You, I see what you were doing, Butcher, but that did not turn out right. Yeah. Did y'all forget the whole point of trying to keep him away from Homelander in the first place so he wouldn't become him? <laughs> it's like, I think Butcher yeah. sort of forgot that. And look what happened. And then the sole reason. What happened? And, and how about how, like, you know how um he had Ryan and he just walked right by Homelander? And now, like, Butcher's stuck there, and Homelander's just walking right by Butcher with Ryan. Right, that was nice. Oh, excellent observation. Nice little mirroring there. And, you know, Butcher just wants him, too, because Butcher, he knows he can't take, like, Compound V much longer. He's going to die. He, so, like, he doesn't have any more chances to, to kill Homelander. But yeah. he can't do it in front of Ryan. And Ryan just wants to go home. What home? With his daddy, Homelander. Yeah. Um, Go laser so, someone's head off. Yeah. So we, I guess we need to talk about Starlight gaining the power to fly. That was kind of cool, I guess. Oh, was that yeah. a power her to big fly or super, she just get lifted her big, up? Her big super powerful blast, all it did was just knock him on his ass. For, Dude, how weak is that superpower? It's hard. That was her, such like, like a buildup for not much to happen. It looked cool, but it did hardly yeah, it, anything. it did look cool. Yeah, and then there was um, 
And like we we rarely saw her use any of her powers this season, if I'm not mistaken. She does a lot, Just of, like a a lot of eye glowing, a lot of threatening. Yeah. When she's mad, yeah. Um, so we have to talk about Huey's arc, which was basically um, how did anything really change for Huey? No, well, he wanted to save Butcher. He wanted to save Butcher because Butcher saved him by knocking him out. So he was a good guy. He was thinking yeah. of taking that. Beat. Seeing seeing the good in people, you know, yeah. like. He he understands why Butcher knocked him out, and I love that he pointed out. He's like Butcher's doing the right thing, you know, in the worst possible way. Like literally, Butcher could have done anything other than knock him out, and it would have been better. But at the end of the day, he knocked him out because he reminded him of his brother Lenny. Uh, oh right, right. But Butcher could have just killed him if he wanted to, right? Like I think he only knocked Huey out. He didn't like incapacitate him because he wanted to be saved. He he always needs to be saved. We didn't want to kill Huey. He had no reason to kill Huey. You know, um, Huey was his was his friend and his, uh, you know, reminded me of his brother, like you said. Um, yeah. But yeah, we, we got to talk about um, that great scene that uh, between Homelander, the Deep A Train, and uh, who's the uh, the redheaded? Ashley. <laughs> Ashley, oh, yeah. Wow. Ashley the uh, wig. That's her new yeah. name. Oh, man. So you can tell her her job is What a funny character, dude. What a funny character. They're all yeah, great, so awkward great, great written Homelander. character. Yeah. Dude, she is crazy. I love her so oh my gosh, much. Yeah. When she takes that wig off and her hair is like all gone, I was like, Ashley, baby, what are you still doing here? And then I was like, wait a second. She's like early 30s, right? Like in charge of like one of the most powerful companies in the world. Like you get it, millennial girl. Like I wouldn't give that job either. <laughs> all my hair would be falling I mean, out. I was she's, like, she's on. Yeah. She's in her constant well, threat of death. She has so. pulling her hair out. Can we talk about how much of a bitch she is, though, uh, to her assistant, other Ashley, which that used to be oh, her yeah. job? So, like, when there's a yeah. nuclear, or not nuclear, when there's a terrorist threat called in and they're going, she's going to the helipad and it's just for uh, senior vice presidents, SVPs. And she's like, sorry, other Ashley. Like, it's not for you. When, like, any decent Fucking person hilarious. would have the empathy of, like, oh my God, I almost, I that used to be my job. I would want to be on this helicopter. But she's like, she just does not care. And then in the end, she just uh, she deletes um, the street cam footage of the boys rescuing Maeve oh, yeah. with other Ashley. Like the only other. Oh, so evidence. Homelander doesn't know. I'm so, guessing. Homelander doesn't know. Yeah. I'm, I'm guessing he's gonna find out next season or something, and he's gonna kill Ashley for holding withholding that. Uh, oh, I maybe that's like why she five, deleted the evidence. Like down the road, like that's the only reason to keep her alive is to kill her off later, right? So like maybe like we forget about Maeve two seasons down the road, like Homelander like disappears and he comes back and he's got Maeve in his hand and he just kills her. I don't know. Do you think this will they'll have like a fifth season after season four? Yeah, I. Uh, I think I think they're, I think they're trying to go for five seasons. I think so. five seasons seems to be a really good sweet spot, and especially with the spinoffs coming from the boys' universe, I think five uh, is right. a really good way to, to to wrap it up. Yeah, I think I'm not sure if the spinoffs coming out later this year or maybe early next year, but uh, I don't think it even has a title yet. We just know it's gonna be like a Animal House sort of. Um, uh, superhero show, like sort of like uh, college for superheroes. Uh, the think. boys presents varsity. Okay, so uh, it's and it's gonna have to deal with the G Men or something like that because I think in the comics, like the G Men have like a um, what a, a fraternity house for and uh, the G Men are like the X Men. Yeah, for superheroes are about to graduate from like the teen G Men to the real. G Men team. Yeah. According to Kripke, it's going to be focusing on America's next generation of soups, uh, specifically the G Men. Okay. So that's basically like the X Men. It sounds interesting. Professor X was a pedophile. Uh, it's the boys in college. I don't know how this isn't going to be even better. Yeah. So um, that's crazy. Uh, all right. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, not just the scene with like uh, Ashley, but the scene with like the deep and A train. He was like, basically telling me, like, y'all aren't my family. You know, y'all are nothing. Yeah, I, I am it. the seven. Like, I'm stronger than all of you guys combined. And then he asks the Deep to commit treason. Treason, yeah. So let's talk about the Deep's arc. Isn't that, I like, mean, tre- is that the first time he's ever killed some, somebody? I mean, he's killed a ton of Probably on purpose. Creatures. He's killed a ton yeah, of sea creatures. True. But that's probably the first person <laughs> he's killed on purpose. 
Yeah, so... Uh, and then you see him. His arc is trash. I absolutely love it. Like, his wife left him after trying to have a threesome with an octopus. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and then she's got her own book coming out called uh, In Too Deeper. Deep, How yeah. I Escape from the Deep or whatever. And, like, you know, it's just going to be full yeah, of, it's... like, all the gross fish stuff that the deep oh, does. Yeah. So, you know, he's out of the boys. So, like, what, oh, who's left man. in the boys now? Is it just Homeland you mean and the A-Train? Se- the seven? Yeah, sorry, well, seven. The deep, yeah. the deep is still is the deep is still technically in right now. At the, for the moment. But let's just go yeah. ahead and assume he's gonna get kicked out for PR can uh, for, for PR reasons um yeah, after this book. Yeah, done, it's funny, like the seven actually had seven members this season, now they're down to three. So they lost four members. Uh with Supersonic, Starlight, um, Maeve, and Black Dwar. Now, there's you no know? reason to replace those members if Well, I don't know. This was just season four, season three, right? So if we're doing five seasons, then yeah, you could replace for season four and then kill him off again in season five. Or wait, hold on, guys. You guys are also like kind of operating under the assumption that Homelander is still operating with like the Vought Seven thing. I mean, he literally killed one of the seven himself. So I think it's going to just become like the Homelander show. You had the Homelander with all of show. his like cr- crazy like Trumper. You know, supporters. Oh, it's definitely going to become the Homelander show. It's going to be called go. the one and yeah. not the seven. Oh, Tip, yeah. you called it. I don't know. I think, Dude, that it is. might be. It is. He's too. He's too megalomaniac. That might be he's too crazy. divergent from the series. That might upset some hardcore fans. Homelander and the Heartbreakers, or the, or the Heart Takers. A train took Blue Trains, Blue Hawks heart. You know, and then he took like, apparently Black there's heart. people out there who thought Homelander was a good guy this whole time. Yeah, we were talking about that on the last uh, episode. That's crazy, this crazy. Old, very right. little, th- little throwback. Listen to our last episode. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what do you mean, like real people? Like, no, like or real like people online. Like, like the for show. the first like two and a half seasons of the boys, thought Homelander was like the good guy, and the boys were the bad guys. Even Things though, like, all right, brainwashing. Yeah, didn't he admit? Wait, what? Didn't he admit like raping Butcher's wife in the first season though? Yeah, yeah, but I mean, if you grab him by the pussy, and if you don't care if they're grabbing him by the pussy, then you don't care about some fictional character. It was locker that. room talk. It was locker room talk. Yeah, and this is just a um, TV show. What's the difference? Yeah, so. Uh, but yeah, that was great. I like that. Um, tweet at us what you think. No, don't, don't, yeah, don't Matt, tweet at us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we have to talk about A Train's arc, I guess, because he, he talked to his brother earlier in the episode, right? What, that was a like, very powerful scene. I, I yeah. really, really enjoyed that, but I also made me think like ah maybe they've underutilized this guy but also who cares about a-train and his dumb arc i mean i like the better than the deeps arc at least but it really just that's very true that i mean like Lander... yeah from mave's arc and in the deeps arc you're right a-train's arc is like the third it's like the third best story going on right now oh and there was it's pop like... claw no you're right a-train's arc has been yeah eh, it's a good story you're right i don't know what i was talking about i didn't yeah. even take it back and i i, I but i really like the show off I liked how they humanized him, but they didn't completely redeem him. You know, sort of like they did with, uh, what's what's her name, Reva and Obi-Wan Kenobi. They tried to, like, completely redeem her and just completely ignore all the atrocities she committed, I guess, in that show. But at least in this one, they they still acknowledge hey, I mean, they still acknowledge the atrocities the a- they did. That's true. They, uh, you know, they still, they still acknowledge that A-Train was still a monster, too, even though, like, they tried to humanize him a bit. So I liked, like, the complex. No one's, like, all good or I all bad that. in the show. So, but yeah, really good to show like A Train has no family now except Vought, which is like probably the worst people you want to call your family, as does the Deep, you know, in a sense too, because his wife's gone and um, yeah. Homelander. Well, Homelander Ooh. has a son now. You think we're going to get Fat Deep in season four? You oh, that'd be, like a, that'd be <laughs> a funny uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's, Like Thor. Fat you Thor? Keep, yeah, you keep seeing him munching on He's always eating, those. like he was eating food, crying in bed. Like, that'd be great well, he, to come he to like, Fat so Thor. Much. Well, when you swim that much, you burn a lot of calories. So like, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, we saw A Train put on a little weight this season when he wasn't running, and they oh yeah, that Homelander. The Homelander's gonna body shame the shit out of both of them next season. So, um, yeah, well, Ironically. I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised if Homelander just discontinued the seven, because they're basically at a point like we can't keep seven people on this team, you know, for more than a day. Yeah, I mean, their 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 share their share price already tanked. So I mean, like, what, what's what what's one more giant disruption? Especially when the CEO yeah. just like murdered someone uh, on, on public TV, which by yeah. the way, did you see was called NNC, which obviously is the opposite of CNN, <laughs> or not oh, the opposite, yeah. but the, the this universe's yeah. version of CNN. And it's NNC. the same colors and everything. Yeah, yeah. Um, so did uh, Frenchie or Kamiko have a lot to do? 
Oh yeah, we saw Kamiko do that stupid flash dance uh, fight yeah. scene. Which, by the way, game. if I was bulletproof, that's exactly how every I would start every one of my fights. Like, like the from she's the not X-Men bulletproof. Series she just the, heals those bullet guys. Holes. That's a good point. And she got yeah. she got Frenchie shot in the leg. So like overall, oh, shitty, yeah. shitty girlfriend, shitty teammate. It's like uh, try it's to why you listen to music skin. while you're you know fighting security guards. Or you yeah. just kill someone the first time you don't bash their head in for thirty seconds while while their teammates like shooting your friend. You just move on to the <laughs> next one. I know that worked Already for Vatu, to but do those security guards really need to die? I just feel like they just had to like what's Kamiko and she's doing her thing. She has to, like brutally murder these guys. They really deserve to die. No There's security guards doing it. So I thought it was like a bit. Of, I mean, if they're like the Russians. You know who were torturing you know soldier boy or like you know i guess that's okay but like i i think i thought the security guards being killed, these, like, these uh, guys are just that's, ex-veterans that's who've come home from the iraq war and are looking to to to, to raise a the family only, and yeah, the only some placing it like a six-figure salary is like that security guards for bought so uh but i don't know slight nitpick but i guess it's kamiko so they have to have her like brutally murder guys so um and I guess, and I uh, guess for some reason, Kimiko and Frenchie no longer want to leave the boys. I guess they're happy together now. So that that seems a little yeah, sad from right field. Since it's but. A democracy yeah, I now. felt. Oh yeah, and also don't forget, little Nina's still out there. So I'm wondering if she's going to come back in season four at some point. They didn't really resolve that um, plot thread. Oh, yeah. um, also, uh, but yeah, I, I, I guess Kimiko and Frenchie's arc this entire season was adequate. Beats. I didn't love it though. It was like it was forgettable. Honestly, yeah, it was but, moot, uh, I would say. It started just how they it ended. I mean, at least we saw them kiss. There, at least there was like some uh, progression there. Yeah, but now it's on. If they, it's not a will they, won't they anymore. Now it's a they tried it and they just want to be friends. Yeah. So, so well, that that kind yeah, of like will they, just, won't they? Bubble burst. Is gone. Yeah, cause he got not friend zone, but. Like, we're family. Like, oh, we kissed. I like you, but I like you more as like a brother or a sister. And this isn't Game of yeah. Thrones. This is the boys, so we're not going to do that here. And also, um, let's move on to Mother's Milk. I guess he didn't really get to avenge his family either, because Soldier Boy's still alive. <laughs> but at least he's not out there like uh, walking around chest right. blasting. And he people. got to have a really good moment with his daughter Janine. I think mean, that's her name. Oh right? yeah, I forgot she about said that. that. Like, be like, Daddy, you're my hero. And it's like, oh. Uh-huh. Oh, good, because Todd, your stepdad, is a real piece of shit. Yeah, Todd is probably the most least liked character on the show now. I feel bad for the actor. Uh, you come to Hollywood with like dreams of stardom, and now you're <laughs> you in a show. Play a and now you're in a show, and now you're, you're in a show where everyone on Twitter is gonna like just bash your character. <laughs> so you probably gotta cast that. And your name is Todd. Yeah. So no, this is not Chad. I wonder why they named him Chad. Oh, he didn't look like a Chad. I guess he didn't look like a Chad. Or Jody. Jody would have been good. He would have been a good Chester or a Wilbur. Maybe not a, a Ugh, Chad. Wilbur? What was he, 80? I think they bring Wilbur back. Let's call him Burr for short. Um, all right, so what else happened? Or Will. Anything? I guess, oh yeah, Starlight's working for the boys now, which I guess was sort of interesting. Whatever. A nice, a nice, setup, a nice setup for next season. Sure. Yeah, we'll note. And I also like they're actually in the building. Uh, they're at, they're in the comics. I, I don't think we mentioned that earlier. Oh, no, no, we didn't. And did you but see above the uh, the trash can shoot is the pictures of them in the lineup, black and white, just like from the boys comics as well. So that's oh, a fun little Easter egg. Yeah, I only got so far in the comics where I think Payback was actually um, trying to take them out, and I think they uh, that ends with them killing Stormfront, who's a dude, and that one. So I need to finish the series. I think I got like a little over halfway. Um, but, um, yeah, I just, uh, I like Garth Ennis' work. I just finished his run on Hellblazer, so the John Constantine, um, series, so that was really good. So, if you like Garth Ennis' stuff from The Boys, I recommend Hellblazer as well. Garth Ennis. Garth Ennis. He also wrote Preacher, of course. Um. I thought it was Garth Ennis. Ennis. I don't know. I guess, uh, how was the Northern Irish, Irish way to pronounce Ennis? I thought it was Garth Ennis. Yeah, I thought it was Garth Ennis. But anyway. Garth Ennis. Yeah. Um, he's, if, if my last name almost sounded like Ennis or Penis, I would go with Ennis. Personally. Just growing up in, in, in public schools, <laughs> I would go I'm with the former <laughs> pronunciation. I'm surprised Garth is even an Irish name. I thought it was like a southern name because of Garth Brooks. <laughs> or isn't Garth Brooks Canadian? Wouldn't that be wrong. great? 
I'm sure he is. Yeah. I think he is. I know, like, he's, 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 somebody's Keith Urban's American, Australian. He's an American songwriter. A really okay. Alma Mater is Oklahoma State. He was born okay. in... That's Southern. Tulsa, Oklahoma. That okay. is... That's southern. pretty Southern. Yeah. That's like, uh... Who are you thinking yeah, of? Carl Urban? Keith Urban? Ryan Reynolds? Keith Ur- he's Australian, yeah. Brittany. Justin Bieber? A lot of great musical uh, exports from Canada, from our brothers up north. Oh, he's a New Zealand-born Australian country singer. That's just phony. He's a big fat phony. Speaking of which, uh, do we want to do um, Thor: Love and Thunder podcast oh, yeah. so in the next couple watched, weeks or so? I'll watch that over the weekend. Those reviews made me like, uh, I don't know. Maybe I'll wait till Disney Plus. Interesting. Oh, I liked it, but. I- the ending was all right. Oh, okay. But overall, I like the movie. Did you like it better than Doctor Strange, Multiverse of Madness? Um, Setting the bar high there, Forrest. <laughs> oh, yeah, Multiverse of Madness. The, the, it, the multiverse, multiverse really Madness see was... two different universes. Uh, we saw 30 seconds of like, you, like other ones. Flash yeah. through random other ones. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's true. That was about it. So you see Bruce Campbell. Whatever. Uh, tweet at us at Z Zealot Podcast if you want us to force forest force forced to watch Thor Love and Thunder and then we'll talk about it on the podcast. Uh, if not, um, maybe Robin it's definitely and I worth some a bonus watch. content. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure it's not like that. Yeah. I don't know. I'll uh I'll I think it's just the um, ending for some people. It's are... a Marvel movie. If, if we were a Marvel one podcast, vote. uh you kinda have to watch it, buddy. Sorry. Them's oh, the man. rules. I don't make. I them. mean, I've I've already suffered through not suffered, but I've already like the missed whole... five episodes of Miss Marvel. So it's a nice segue at least. If I'm watching, yeah. is it better than Miss Marvel though, Robbie? Oh yeah. Okay, <laughs> it's probably well, I'm, that's saying a lot because Miss Marvel has been really great. It's just let me ask you this. Let me ask you this, guys. Is it better to have loved and lost or never to have loved at all? Because I was thoroughly enjoying the hell out of this TV show, and these last two episodes. Uh, have really kind of been, I don't know, boring, rushed. It, the magic's not there. What it just, it, it doesn't just doesn't feel, feel like it. it's the same. The magic was there. Remember the veil. Remember the veil from the Nor. The, yeah. the veil from the Nor. Maybe what is it called? maybe my bangles broke. And I just don't have that magic. Anymore. So is the dimension called the Nor? Is the energy called the Nor? And they're the clandestines. It's. Really, um, I don't know. I didn't really get it. was a really convoluted way to give Comron powers. Let's put it that way. <laughs> right? And what was the point of that? What What was the point of that? So, like, they open up a rip. Her henchman touches it, gets petrified, turns to skeleton, and then turns to dust. And then she's like, ah, that guy just wasn't doing it right. I know how to do it. Touches it. Same thing happens. But then, like, her essence goes into Comron. Yeah, and he gets turquoise power, so it's gonna be a lot like WandaVision. A lot of turquoise energy versus magenta energy next episode, I'm guessing. Because I'm guessing, like, they're gonna fight each other. Um, I mean, I, I know, like, damage control, I guess, is supposed to be the bad guy. I mean, I, the clandestines are the bad guys, because uh, they're trying to destroy the Earth to get back home. But I'm guessing, like... There's still a couple control, of them left, right? Two? Is there two? No, they're all dead. They, they, oh, they, killed, they killed two of them, I think, last episode. The Red Dagger guy killed two of them. Oh, uh, like, okay. Um, and then there were two to the portal. Yeah, and those two died. Yeah, because yeah, remember, like, this episode, the first half was a flashback. And then, like, it, it, it started back to where the, just the two were left. So let's talk about this flashback. So she goes, literally goes back in time to save her grandmother. She's the person who does the floating stars, which, like... I don't know. Was that a reveal? Did anyone not see that coming? Like, as soon as I heard that story, I was like, that kind of sounds like her powers. I didn't really pay attention to the story because it was kind of like just convoluted and kind of like a lot of sense. I just, I just understood like she was a girl and she found her dad. I don't know. Her, her, but yeah, her I, mean, I, was, I, didn't, I mean, I knew what they were going for. I knew what yeah. they were going for. Like, it was like, but, oh, so it like, was me the whole time. Aisha, her great grandmother, summons Aisha. Back in town, Aisha. like summons, su- summons Kamala back in time to get her grandmother to her grandfather. Which, by the way, uh, the child was only about six feet away from the dad. Like they were never in any real serious trouble. Like they, were, like the kid wasn't a hundred feet separated. Like the kid was like literally six feet away. Like the crowd moved 
with like the, the floating stars, like lights or whatever. And like the crowd moved and like the daughter was like literally less than six feet away from the dad. So like, it just she like, got it pretty seemed, like a really far away. She got pretty freaking far away from him. That's what it made it look like. Cause like literally she's next to him the next minute. She's like a mile, half mile away. Right, exactly. <laughs> and it's like, like, yeah. It just seemed like the perspectives ever. were off everywhere. Like the shooting was poor. Uh, it just like it doesn't seem like like the love that was there like the first three episodes seemed like it was just really rushed. Uh, you know what this reminds me of? Every episode reminds me of a season like the the corresponding season of Lost, and it's just it's just Ooh. slowly breaking my heart. Not really. But <laughs> yeah. It's just not as good. As it, it's just not as good it as it was or well. as it as it could be. Maybe it was just a shameless money grab at teenage girls. Well, they have my money. Disney's, you know. I mean, like I said, yeah, shame, I people were like brutally murdered in this episode, so I don't think you can, like um, sort of reminded me. What's that one? What's that one uh, show or movie where they become a skeleton after touching something immediately? Uh, like Arch- Indiana Arch- Jones. That's what I was uh, thinking of. Yeah, Indiana. Yeah, yeah. There's, 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 there's some other show I'm thinking of where they become like really bad CGI skeletons. The Nazis all skeletonized. You chose poorly. It's great. Maybe it was like Mortal Kombat. Don't they become skeletons? No, no, no. It was um, Spider-Man. Like when the uh, Green Goblin threw the pumpkin and they all become bad CGI skeletons. Oh, that like, sounds familiar. Like, which Spider-Man? Do you know what the first three one. Spider-Man like the last 10 years or whatever? Or oh, yeah, so years, first like, Spider-Man. The one so with the Green much. Goblin. Oh, wait, they all have the Green Goblin. Uh, the one with the first Green Goblin. The one with Willem Dafoe. That was okay. No Way Home. Yeah, Sam Raimi yeah, Spider-Man. He, he threw that pumpkin bomb and... Um, you know, boom, they all become skeletons. So, you know, William Defoe was the perfect green goblin. Yeah, I really like the first Look. movie. Um, and the suit doesn't bother me that much. Still doesn't. Do you, you think we will see William Defoe, Willem Defoe as the Joker in our lifetime? No, because we got Joaquin Phoenix. Are we doing a, a sequel? Do you guys want or, that? Or is that going to be absolute garbage? A musical? Like, that's going to be so hard to pull off. But Lady Gaga is in it, and she's gonna be Harley Quinn, and it's gonna be terrible. Yeah. Uh, I is, this the, I, is this the death? I think this might be the Han Solo. Thought, we all thought the Joker movie itself was gonna be terrible. N- and, did you? Uh, I thought it was gonna be. Like, it's hard to it's hard to mess up the Joker. Like, I mean, it's, it's pure like madness this... and chaos. I mean, ask Jared Leto. He did. He was the closest <laughs> person to ever come to it. Yeah. Ah, 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 ah. You can't see the visual, but I've put my hand over my mouth. Yeah. Acting like I have Doing the tattoo the that's wasn't he wearing, fucking mouth. Yeah. Wasn't he um, wearing like dishwashing gloves in the Snyder Cut or something? They brought him back for like a few seconds. <laughs> it was so weird. Dude, yeah, that, why is he wearing? That was really like a bad straight post credit scene. Just Jared. Yeah. Yeah. Stop, dude. Just stop. Except, no. Actually, make another Morbius movie. Um, Nick, I want a Morbius too. <laughs> so it's just like screw you. We're gonna keep. We're, we're gonna keep going. We're it's like, Morbin time. Elon it's Musk like, is no longer trying to buy Twitter. He should fund Morbius. Please buy oh, Sony. Yeah. It's Morbin please time. Please buy Sony and then have him sell Spider-Man rights back to. The, oh, first of all, he should just buy Marvel from Disney so they can start doing dark Disney movies again. You know, pe- get, some people get like an actual that. good R-rated, you know, Blade, Punisher. Would Ghost you be Rider. happy if if Disney sold the Star Wars franchise? Yes. Uh, oh yeah, hell yeah! I'd be happy yeah. if they sold Marvel and Disney and uh, not Disney, but oh, oh. That's, uh, oh I don't know. Oh, See, I don't know about that? Marvel. I don't know if I. Yes, know. I want them to sell Marvel because now we can never get like an R-rated Punisher. We but we're getting like, an R-rated. Down. We're getting an R-rated Deadpool. Like the things. Are like, we? Yeah, yeah, we're, yeah. They I'll believe, when I, I'll believe when I see it. I, th- um, I think movie. I said Brian Reynolds said like Deadpool can work as a PG thirteen movie, and I, I thought they just that just meant like Disney said we can't do it unless it's PG thirteen. So I don't know. I'll believe it when I see it, but I I really I don't think um, you know we don't see the Disney castle or what the Magical Kingdom castle whenever we um, see a Marvel movie start up. But I don't see Disney allowing yes. them to make an. Yeah, I don't see Disney Marvel selling movie. them, but it would be fantastic if they sold off this amazing IP that. Uh, an R-rated. Fucking give it to New Line Cinema. I want a graphic Star Wars car. I just, I want a bloody, I want the Sith done right. That's all I'm People saying. People being chopped in half. And right? It's not just like the most violent uh, thing we get is a Wilhelm I scream. Wanna, I want to see Berserker Wolverine. Oh, yeah. You know, we saw that with Logan, but like, I want to see like him in like the actual classic costume. Matt. With an actor, with an actor who's like 5'3". Welcome to the show, ladies and gentlemen. We have, uh, 
one of my favorite people in the world, Matt, has joined us uh, back from being a father to his full-time job as a podcaster. Welcome back, good sir. Yeah. Matt, let me ask you a question off the top of the dome. Of the current Marvel movies that have been out, phases one through four, right? There's 20, 23, 24 of them. If you could turn any one, one movie into an R-rated version of it, which movie would that be? I'll let you guys think on that while we... Yeah, well, any we'll MCU on. movie? Any MCU any, movie? Any MCU already? movie, yeah. So, like, starting from Iron Man to all the way to Thor. Love no, Thunder, starting from seen. the Hulk. We'll do the first Hulk. I'll even give you that one. Well, Iron Man precedes the Hulk. Does it? The Incredible Hulk. With I thought Edward the Hulk Norton. came out two months earlier. No, no, it came two months after, or like a month after Iron Man, I think. So, with Edward Norton? I mean, yeah, that would be Iron Man. Iron Man. Man. Touche. Thank you. Do sir. Iron Man again. You mentioned <laughs> Arena. I mean, honestly, I think Hulk. I love that. That's what I was. Iron my answer was going to be the Hulk. Honestly, maybe even like Iron Man. Maybe well, off, uh, how about Iron Man Two? Because that would have been like a much better movie than it was. Oh, wait, is that when he's drunk? Is that is that is that demon in that bottle? Yeah, sh- that's what it should have been. Just him. Ah, like, just him. Just so him, like you know, like him, you know, the, just have, uh, him up in the donut. Him, thro- him throwing up in the, in the helmet. Guys, the correct answer to this question is Civil War. Oh, uh, Civil no. War was pretty good. Yeah, it's Civil no. War hands down. I'd say, I would, still say Iron a, Man 2. Yeah, that's a good one. Wait. And the reason I say Iron Man 2 is because okay. the government, because there's a story uh, in Matt Fraction's from Iron Man where they they prove that um, he was drunk while operating the Iron Man armor. And if you can't operate, you know... Like, Heavy machinery. Uh, fight, yeah. So he basically couldn't use his Iron Man armor. Or he had to like wear like a... Um, some sort of like he has to get a breathalyzer. Device. He has he to has, blow has to into... a breathalyzer, and like basically, like the bad guy got control of his suit and he couldn't use it because you know. So that would have been a great story. Like he couldn't use his own armor because he they proved that he was an alcoholic. Is so that the breathalyzer been a great story. on his cod piece? Because that'd be great. And no. what if it was Tony Stark being <laughs> Tony Stark? Like it gets in the hands of the enemies, but they don't know that you have to actually be drunk and blow in the. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a good one. I like that. That's a fun twist. They're like, why does <laughs> this piece of shit armor work? And it's because they're all sober. And then yeah. he comes in there. Hey, with I, some I gotta go. Oh, we love oh, yeah, man. Tip you have. Yeah, thanks for hopping on, Tip. I gotta go, but but. Um, you think of Miss Marvel? Quick. The one the one thing that I would I wish I could see that's R rated, a Marvel, mm-hmm. is WandaVision. Oh yeah, just like a, a whole scene. Because it could have been so much darker. Oh, it was. I mean, we did get pretty dark. Yeah. I know, it, and and it. It was like limited by being like. Uh, and they so don't have to kind of Disneyfy everything. But like, she is Scarlet Witch. She is freaking insane, right? She's like lost her right. mind. So. Well, so you want to see her like in mom? It could have been like a way darker. I would say Darth Multiverse Madness. of Madness was almost very R-rated. That was definitely a PG-16 movie. You know where she snaps R. Professor R. X's neck. Oh yeah, that was even like more uh, crazy scene. So that was gruesome. Bad. That definitely was like one of the more gruesome MCU That's String movies. cheese. What was that? Was that Matt? Oh shit. It's on Disney Plus. It's on Disney Plus. Right, right. Ooh. How if they had just gone with like the original Shang Chi premise, where he's basically just like a mix of James Bond and Bruce Lee, just going around the world fighting, like you know. Uh, you know, Fu Manchu is who's more like a James Bond villain, just trying to take over the world. You know, that would have been you know a great direction to take it. They wouldn't like the whole mystical route, which was I think a bad, bad play. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what Shang Chi is. Yeah, that'd be fun. Yeah. <laughs>
Well, Razor Fist by himself would have been a great R-rated villain because like it could have shown like how he lost his because he like comics he has both his hands are blades. So like just ha- like that like the Uh-oh. possibilities right there, just him like just like slice people up with his razor with his razor hands. You know, that would have been mm. Yeah, so, I mean, honestly, just, like, cause, like the thing that, like, irks me is that, um, you know, I think the actor, Simu Liu, is, like, completely just, like, shadow on the comics, you know. And to be fair, there are, like, some racial stereotypes. You know, Fu Manchu himself is, like, definitely, like, you know, a Yellow Peril character. Completely, yeah. But I think, like, the overall premise, and I think Marvel should be commended for even having an Asian lead that early on in the comics anyway. But, you know, definitely some needs to be some retweaking to the modern age. But I think the general premise of Shang-Chi just him being like a secret agent and fighting other martial artists and, you know, um, uh, secret organizations would have been um, cool. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I'd still go like... I'll go ahead. Agreed. Peace. Why? All the cool parts. We we need to see all the cool parts anyway. Yeah. Well, apparently they cut. Does it need to be R rated? Maybe if we got well, to see that third guy, Mark. What's the other one? L- Jake, Jake Lockley. Jake, Jake, Jake Lockley, Lockley yeah. right? If we maybe if we got to see Jake, you know, I definitely think like you know, season two. Show me who Jake Lockley is, and that shit better be rated R, for sure. Well, I know it's not well, gonna be rated the- R. Yeah. Right. I, I well, apparently, apparently there was a a whole cut scene, a whole fight scene that got cut instead of just him punching the uh, that thing in the bathroom. That there was like an actual whole fight that we missed. Oh, I don't oh, yeah. know. Yeah, I read an article about that. I don't see how they can do Blade without making R rated, but I know they're gonna try. <laughs> Yeah, same thing with uh, well, not same thing, but I think they're doing like a Werewolf by Night Halloween special later this year. I don't see how that can work without being R rated either. Um, what about an R rated Infinity War? But here's the clutch, here's the kicker, right? It doesn't really become R rated until the snap, and then it's 10 minutes of your favorite characters dying in the most traumatic ways to the point where everyone is crying by the end of it. Yeah. No. no. Well, Matt, let's get your th- your thoughts on the voice season finale real quick. What was like one thing you liked and one thing you didn't like, and like maybe just like what you thought the season as a whole. Yes. Yeah, I, I was surprised they did it. Yeah, so it just seemed pointless to me. It, it really carried no weight. Yeah, it just n- yeah, no so emotional that means weight. Maeve could get her powers back if she. Yeah, wants yeah, to. yeah. Just like Kamiko, Soldier Boy so. started asleep. Soldier Boy ends asleep. Yeah, so. Yeah, they're just right back to where they were. Yes, you'll have well, to go back yes. and listen yeah. to the beginning. I was going in on on, we, on Todd yeah, earlier. I just, you 
cheers. He hyperventilates. Him. Like you can see, like he's like he's like twitching with like uh, like a dopamine release. Like he can't control himself, and he's just oh, 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 and he oh, yes. cheers. Yeah, it's like having an orgasm. He, he's gonna die a very violent death next. He season, had I guess. his mind blown. Oh, Forrest, who kills him? Who kills him? Oh, I hope it's not Janine. I hope it like doesn't kill. I hope they don't kill someone close to Todd to change Todd's point of view. Yeah, and then like that would do more damage. Like if you kill Janine, then, then it would affect Mother's Milk. You would get Todd involved, like, and you would see like, you, then you could show like from a writing perspective on the show like how people who were a part of QAnon got like like the rug like pulled and like the yeah. the cloth over their eyes or whatever, wherever that stupid idiom is. Yeah, um, and how like the, after that they realized like. It was a bunch of lies and conspiracies, and JFK wasn't going to be resurrected in Texas. Well, you know how writers love to subvert expectations. Todd's going to run the vice president? I'd go. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. He's not. That's good. Excuse oh, me. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah, he wasn't going to be resurrected. He's just going to come back. He's not dead. Yeah, JFK. Yeah, JFK and Trump seem like really they get along progressively, like ideologically. Seem like they'd be BFFs. Such a weird, weird conspiracy. That's like Mad Lib conspiracy. It's like, yeah, like, I mean, think a think... worse president who would hate Trump more than JFK. <laughs> Obama. I mean, they definitely have the same taste in, you know, trying to screw <laughs> everything that walks or breathes. So, but anyway, uh, did you watch Miss Marvel at all this week, Matt? Okay, we can. That's true. Yeah. Well, if you love Karachi last episode, you're gonna love this episode because it's basically all in Karachi. Or I don't know. Maybe it's not. I think it's like uh, all in India. I mean, it's in a train station in Karachi. You know, it's like maybe I think it's a train station going to Karachi. But yeah, this space yes. is first. Yeah, good point. Yeah, good point. The first, the first half of Miss Marvel this week was Miss Marvel less. See what I did there? Brilliant. And and uh, it's basically like how her great-grandparents met. And basically we now know that Kamala is one-eighth clandestine. But that's just enough oh, for the brace. Oh, I forgot the love story. Man, yeah. I forgot all about that. The what? Basically, the clandestines are like definitely the dime store <laughs> Eternals. That's what this show is like written <laughs> as. They definitely they just, should have eternal Easter eggs. They're like, basically they Kamal Nanjiani, like somewhere in the background, because uh, he's like a you know he's a Bollywood actor. It's, it's so time. it's so funny because you know like how like India has like really like lame knockoff version like Twenty Four and Breaking Bad. That's what the clandestines are. They're just like, <laughs> really, <laughs> like knockoff knock return. They just they have really like they're immortal and they're from a different you know planet or reality. Um, Dimension. But they just have really bad costumes, or they have no costumes. They just have like these really, really bad weird, weapons. Like these really, just you know, billions. you know, vague weapons. Like one has like a whip that looks like it's like made of metal. One has like a spear. One has like a, a mace. Matt, a guy to a guy to belt or something. Matt, can I ask you a question? You and me, right? You, and me, Forrest, and Robbie, and Ted. We're all stuck here on this godforsaken planet, and we're trying to get back to our own dimension, right? Uh, Tip and Robbie die. It's just you, me, and Forrest, right? Then Forrest dies because there's only two of them. I forgot about that for a second. Uh, so they're all dead. It's just you and me, right? And we finally open up this gigantic energy portal. And I touch it to go home. And then my body turns into stone. And then I turn into bone. And then I turn into dust. Would you then touch that orb next to go home? <laughs> <laughs> No, if I disintegrate in front of you, you also wouldn't try to do the same thing I just did. And disintegrate. Were you disintegrating or disappearing from this world? Yeah. Did Major. The other one. Oh, so that's a good ethical question. They're killing oh, themselves. They're killing yeah. themselves and I think I've heard that. replicas. Like that's there's an ethical issue with teleportation. Yeah, that's crazy. But I never uh, thought of that. 
Uh. That's like that uh that Rick and Morty episode with his uh playback button or Oh yeah what, yeah whatever yeah. it was called. It was like an extra life thing. And then <laughs> Rage go back in like time where he's actually splitting off universes. Yeah, yeah. he's killing himself and yeah. And okay. killing that, that was a good episode. That Morty. Now so, that's how you do a multiverse of madness. There's also a similar issue on the Venture Brothers, which I know you all love. Where um, you know, the everyone boys take a are, drink. Everyone at home take a drink. For the boys are cloned several times. I don't want to spoil it, but um, you know, you have to keep watching. We need bingo cards. Yeah. Um. So, uh, Major, I'm yes, I'm sir. pretty sure. I mean, I I think possibly the writers Miss Marvel are smarter than me. You know, possibly, but uh, maybe not. Was there a good reason why the veil didn't work and why it killed them instead of sending them back home? Was I imagine because they only had one bangle. Uh, and in the and okay. earlier they said they needed both Bengals to get home, and then Bruno. Uh, oh, I thought this was fun. Um, Comron has been calling Bruno Brian uh, this whole mm-hmm. season, and he thought he was being like passive aggressive, like alpha male, like kind of like like uh, really like taking him down. But he actually just got his name wrong, uh, which is I think is great because uh, I think Eric Boss pointed out like from New Rockstar that like a lot of people probably got Comron's name wrong, and it's like it's just very common. Like you know, you're from different cultures, you get people's names wrong. Um, but okay. I think they pointed out like that they needed both of them, and then Bruno said, like you know, it, it could destroy the whole planet. You need like a very large power source, and I didn't really see a very large power source where they were. I just saw a, a gigantic glowing orb, which I thought the CGI looked great. Uh, as far as like gigantic, I mean, balls just for, like CGI, a vague, like, like a vague, like a vague CGI thing. Then yeah, it was great for that. But like, um, I don't know what it was supposed to be. This is like they, they touch it, and somehow Najma was ever able to reverse the polarity. <laughs> Or whatever to close it, uh, so that that happened. A lot of like, a lot of like, the plot needed to happen in this episode without like explaining right. the logistics. That's what happened it. to the writing? That's why I'm like, the writing was so good in the beginning. Like, what happened to well, it? Well, apparently the head, the showrunner for this this show left after the first episode. So apparently they had different cooks in the kitchen, and I get, that's why probably the first episode, the first couple episodes are so different. Yeah, you probably have a couple of good. They probably have some really solid notes too. Um, yeah, that's probably like why the, the, the first episode seems so different than this from this episode. Um, but well, that's uh, a shame. Yes. And I think that's a problem that Disney. And this is for another podcast, but I think that's a problem that Disney has is like this, like optimizing talent and like talent retention. Uh, and like I think they... they're headed in the right direction, right? Like Patty Jenkins is losing her Star Wars. Uh, Taika Waititi is <laughs> getting his D and D. Um, I've been getting back into A Song of Ice and Fire, uh, which just makes me hate D&D even more now. Uh, you been reading the books? Uh, I've been um, Listening cruising audience. through the theories online. I did some, uh. some yard work, and I found a seven-hour iceberg uh, video for A Song of Ice and Fire. I'm only three hours into it. But, yo, that, that world is crazy. Yeah, I, I'm still like halfway through book two, so some one day I'll finish it. Um, but you I don't know. you'll probably finish it before uh, Martin does. Yeah, yeah, pretty good. Yeah. Off, Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh wow. Yeah. It's about now, the time well, when the last uh, King Killer Chronicle this, book came out. This is definitely off topic. But let me ask you this. Do you think the books are written and he just doesn't want to release them until he's dead? No, he hasn't written them. That makes sense. That's what I would do. 100%. That makes sense, and we've seen that happen before because he had that famous outline from like 1991 or 1992 where there was like a, a three-way love connection between John, Arya, and Sansa. So like, like, we've seen him completely change the the story in the past. So it would make sense that he he could have done that again. Yeah. Well, that's a little well, scary because he is yeah. definitely uh, 
overloaded with projects right now. I would say, you know, at least if, if you're trying to rewrite, you know, the the rest of your series. Yeah. Well, I guess we need to. I'll oh, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. He can write like literally like ten bucks, ten books in a year. He's a very prolific. Um, so I guess we talk about Stranger Things now, the finale, um, the the finale movie. So. Do we want to yeah. do we want to wrap this up and start a new new podcast? Um, yeah, we can. Uh, do you want to like just in recording now and just um, yeah, and then just hop back in. All right. So, um, yes, yeah, this, uh, this is our ending for our show discussing the boys and Miss Marvel. Uh, Major, you want to plug our social media? Absolutely. You know, I do. Uh, if you enjoyed this episode, if you enjoyed what you're watching on TV, let us know what you're watching on TV. Uh, you can tweet at us at Z Zealot Podcast on Twitter. That's Z Zealot Podcast on Twitter. Um, you can also join our Discord. If you want to be a part of the conversation, we'll put the uh, we'll put the link in the description here. Don't forget, if you enjoyed this episode, check out the episode we're about to record next, which means it'll probably drop next, and that's going to be on the um volume two season four stranger things and boy do we have a lot to say about that so definitely stick around if you um want to it would be a huge favor for all of us if you could give us a a five-star review if you you think we we deserve it if you love this podcast as much as we love doing the podcast give us a rating review really helps out that old almighty algorithm thanks for listening guys yep and we'll catch y'all very soon